Well, let me go on and say this why I got some coffee in me because it's late and um, well, it's late for me because I gotta I gotta work tomorrow afternoon and I don't I haven't been sleeping well during the day. Um, so, but I need to be up a little bit so I don't get up early and then be up all day either. Um, I'm fed up with the election already. Um, I've been getting a lot of mail-in votes just like last year. Ever since, and I'm just speaking from my end of things. I'm not speaking from your end. I'm speaking from mine. Now, I already told you how... I know that Donald Trump, if he didn't do it, he was trying like hell to do it. Fix the economy that Obama left us with. She was knocking on my door. I had to invite her in every once or twice a month. She was checking on me to make sure that I had a job, liked my job, wasn't looking for a better job, and if I was looking for a better job, do I know how to get the resources that I need to get that job? Is there anything she can do for me to help me, okay, um, get to the place I want to be, you know, um, job-wise, okay? They were sending in the minute they did this last time when uh, Trump was going against Biden. The mail-in votes. And we were taught to shut up about them cheating. Okay, okay, let me ask you this. How come we weren't doing mail-in votes for Obama? How come we weren't doing mail-in votes for um, Clinton and all the presidents before them. The mail-in votes did not happen until Trump, in their opinion, snuck into office some kind of way. And what kills me about all this is that somebody, the people, the whistleblowers, okay, and the courts, the whistleblowers and the courts, the whistleblowers and the courts, behind all this, they're sitting back. It's like two parents sitting there watching their kids fight. And you know that the older kid is cheating. Or you know that the older kid, you know, um, already wounded the other kid. And it's like you're letting them fight, you're letting them fight, and then when you get tired of being entertained, you'll finally say, okay, stop. And then, and then you know, you tell the, the bigger kid, the one, you know, the bigger kid, whatever, for wh whatever reason, he's stronger. You, you tell him, okay, stop. Because you want to go to bed tonight or whatever, okay? And then you let the little kid come and go crazy on the big kid and go ape murder on him, death calling to the big kid. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, who is, who is behind all this? I mean, is anybody going to go to jail besides Trump? Is anybody going to be addressed and punished and pointed the finger at and saying, no, 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 no. There's no argument for it. You did this and you know what you're doing and you know you're wrong. It stops tonight. Who's going to do that? It's not going to be Trump. It's not going to be anybody on the side of the Democrats. I'm getting fed up with this game. And I'm strolling YouTube, and I made somebody at my job mad at me because I brought up the fact that I felt that it was necessary for me to tell people that I didn't agree with that whole, you know, uh, Halloween thing where they had 
um, Trump and somebody on some little truck with a weapon and they had this woman that was supposed to be playing Kamala Harris in handcuffs and he's pulling her along while he's driving this little Jeep or whatever and he had uh, however that went um, and it went viral and this girl, this lady at work, she said, oh that's going to make Trump look bad and I'm thinking, okay, she's on my side the minute the conversation found out, and then one of the other guys, they just start screaming. That's what you Democrats do. You just start screaming. And I said, I said, what was that crap? You know, and the other officer, he starts screaming. You know, getting all loud about it. And did you hear me say that I'm not in agreement with that? Now they want to punch. Now, now it's like I lost another friend. Well, she was acting too crazy and radical anyway and being too silly, you know, on a pagan level. So, I don't know where you're going with this, but, you know, I don't know what, you, what kind of games you've been playing with me lately. But you a little bit too old to be a fornicator, and so am I. You know what I'm saying? You know, this ain't, you know, you know we're not going to, you know, I don't know what you're playing. I, like, I mean, I like the attention. I like you to make me feel like I'm I'm somebody special when you walk in that door. That's fine, but I only date Christians. Okay, and there ain't nothing in between me and marriage. We go straight from being a couple. To till death do us part. There's no little fun and little fun stuff in between. So if you're not marriage material, you might not want to. If you're not a Christian, you might not want to. Because you're going to go and do that with somebody else too. I know that. And I don't mean to take you seriously, but you're going to do that with somebody else because you have to. One and then two. If you're doing that with someone else and then you're doing that with me too, what does that look like? Like, I can understand one day out of the week you feeling like you just want to make people feel good by flirting with them or whatever, singing to them and all like that. They go out of their way to talk to you and all like that. Okay. Don't come back tomorrow and do it again. Now you got me thinking. <laughs> you know. Because I hate to tell you, not only am I a Trump supporter, I'm a Christian. And the minute you try to go too far with something, I have to let you know you're standing on holy ground when it comes to me. Okay? Or at least I wish it was holy ground. I can't make my job site holy ground, but pfft, I'm a holy person. You know, like, I don't mind teasing with you and joking with you, but. If you don't want me to take you seriously when you're joking, tone it down a little bit. You know. Because I'm not the only one. And now that you know, well, you're probably not going to do it anymore anyway. I probably squashed that when you find out that I, you know, she called me a little boy. Now, now I'm a little boy. I was a man. And now she called me a little Trump boy. And I look at her she made sure I heard her. Above everything else that was going on in the room, she called me little boy, little Trump boy. I said, "You called me a little boy." She knew just walk away after that. So I guess I messed up that relationship because this is the thing. Let's say we win. I don't think we're going. We are, but let's say we win. Let me throw this in there real quick. What happens if we win? If we win, then the things that are out of hand will be put back to normal mode. Everything. That's what we believe. That's what we're hoping for. Now, last time Trump was in office, and I think that was the last time he was in office, he's not getting in office. They, they've already showed the results. And they're not going to come back and say, you cheated. And they... Oh, I want to cuss so bad. They did this last time. 
They got on network television and said everybody was cheating, Democrats and Republicans, with the mail-in votes and, and doing crazy stuff like putting the Labrador Retriever, okay, as a, you know, and they put this stuff on TV. But when you remind Democrats that are hating on Trump about the fact that they sent this in the same media that hates on Trump, they totally get lost. Like, no, it didn't. They never said, oh, my God. I think if I had the money right now, if I was rich, you know, if I had Elon Musk money, I would probably buy me a house in another country right now. Buy me a house and a little, little, little car to get around with, around the country with. And I would sit there and wait for it. And I would, I would vote. I would put in my vote. And I would come back and vote. And I would keep my American status, but, you know, maybe keep some property over here or something like that. Keep keep my driver's license. Keep a driver's license, you know, in a former residence here in the States. You know, own a piece of property or something. But I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't live here. I think I would leave and move to Europe or, or uh, the UK or the continent of Asia or something. This is getting out of hand. If I had Elon Musk money or Trump money, I think I would I would leave here. I would I would live in another country. I would keep my American status because when it all comes down, everything that affects America is going to weasel its way down to you. You're not exempt. If we don't have no morals over here in America, you're going to slowly lose your mor your mor morals in other countries. Now, one of my favorite countries right now is in fear of China. You know, um, what's that word? Colonizing them all over again. First, they were colonized. You know what I'm talking about. They were colonized by Spain which I think in one way helped him over the years over the moons and now they're about to be colonized by China which is going to just and all those Americans over there are not going to sit over there and be calling and they're not going to you know they're don't get me wrong but then again you know white Americans I don't know there's a lot of Americans in China living in China it's getting to the place where people that should be owning homes and selling their assets and all like that, they're going to keep their money and just live all over the world in various places and paying cheap money for apartments. A lot of people that were happy being rich here in America are going to be happy living on little in another country. Not because they can't afford it, like they say over in the Philippines. But because of the politics and, and, and this greed for control of their own people beneath them, like these Democrats, you know, people like Kamala and Biden, they just want to control you and take away your rights. And oh, they want to make it, they want to act like it's, it, it has nothing to do with them. They'll use you that, you know, your hatred for Trump. And your hatred for what you call racism versus what somebody else calls not really racism, just being just being themselves or whatever. Your you, they'll take your politics. It ain't even really their politics. Your politics come from the craziness of their politics. They ain't even thinking like that. They ain't going home being racist against white people every night. They about as white as white people are when they go home. But they got you. You know, hating on your own people, as well as teaching black people how to be, how to claim white people. Or, well, wait a minute. If this white person is racist, how come you, how come your Democratic behind ain't racist? 
Hey, you white, you just as white or whiter than he or she is. White people calling white people racist. I just want to cuss. I really do. How do you know a white person is racist when he he makes the same amount of money you do? He feeds the poor just like you do. He's got black people working for him just like you do. Okay? And he's governor, senator, whatever, just like you are. Okay? He's making his millions or billions just like you are. You know, how, how do you know? How, how do you... Please don't tell me that these two clowns that just called each other white racists and accused each other of white supremacy and all like that are going to go to the same party. If I call a black person a racist, I'm not partying with you. I don't want to be around you. And I'm not bringing no white people around you. Okay? I don't care if you if you all of a sudden want to... You said it. It came out of your mouth, bro. I'm not... You know, I'm taking your word for it. You know, you said some things that... You said in front of me that you know you can't say in front of other blacks. Or whatever. I'm not bringing up black folks around you because I might have cowered it out. They're going to knock you out. They're going to punch you right in your face. And both of y'all voting for, for Kamala. But they're going to knock you flat out. Y'all both voting for the same person and you're going around calling white people racist. But then you're going to say that racist innuendo to this little guy. And if I want to be rude, I could sit there and talk about what you said that you didn't say when you were trying to get black folks to vote for Kamala. They're going to knock you out. His six pound, 250 pound, six feet tall, 650 pound self going to knock you out. I'm sick and tired of this. And now I have a feeling that Trump is going to lose. Because unless, oh, I just want to cuss, unless people get arrested and unless people, unless you stop the process like they didn't do last time and put things, reschedule everything and make everybody revote, he's going to lose. I promise you that. Election day will not be November 5th. And the same people are so fast. Like, oh, there's police blocking the, the voter places. And, and they won't let nobody in or out. And they've proved in here, right here in my state. My most favorite part of Pennsylvania they're doing this crap. And I think Lancaster County, that's mostly Democrats. Those are mostly Republicans. That's why I want to move. That's why eventually I want to retire there because it's a very conservative part of town. Way, from, way far away from here, but very conservative. And this went on in Lancaster. And I'm wondering if it's the Democrats or the Republicans, but the thing is, Lancaster is a very Republican. I'm pretty sure most of the white people in Lancaster are voting Trump. It makes me mad. But understand something. You can have free stuff. You can have taxes. You can have our social security, our health benefits. I don't care about that crap when it comes to morals. I don't care about that crap. If you're going to sit there and claim you're going to give me all this stuff for free and cut the prices down, but yet our cities, but yet you're saying you're going to give me free, but wait, there's no food to give me for free because it's not on the shelf. 
Okay, there's stuff that I can't get in the store. It's like being on an island here. I got to wait and wait and wait for it to come back across the sea. We, this ain't Hawaii. This is this is this is the bigger land. Like what what's going on? Like, and this is Pittsburgh, and this is Pennsylvania. We're not suffering here like they are in New York, like they are in Texas, Florida. We never do. When there's a crisis. It hits us last. Just like when something new comes out, it hits us last. There's a good side of us being last and a bad side of being us last. We're the last to know. Okay? We're the last to know anything. How long did it take them to have another riot in Pittsburgh? It took George, George Floyd for them to have a, a riot here in Pittsburgh. Okay? I forget whether that was that on Trump's watch. I think that was right after. That was the beginning of, wasn't that at the beginning of Biden's campaign when we had that riot? Wasn't, wasn't Biden in office when we, wasn't, what, what year was George Floyd? That's another thing. That's another thing. What year was that? May 25, 2020. That was on Trump's watch. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wait a minute. 2020. This is 2024. I think, no, that's when the election was, wasn't it? That was when he was sworn in. 2020 was the was the yeah. Twenty twenty one, that following year. Yeah. But See, Biden, a member of the Democratic Party, was previously served as vice president for two terms under President Barack Obama, took office after his victory in the 2020 presidential election over the incumbent President Donald Trump of the Republican Party. Okay. So he won in 2020. But he was actually sworn in in 2021. So... Trump ended 2020. Biden started 2021. So it's funny how Trump ended 2020, and that's they couldn't wait for you know the George Floyd crap to happen. You know, um, but I can't say it wouldn't happen. But there was no none of this stuff happened on Trump's watch. You know, um, incidents like that. Incidents like um, uh, riots and all that stuff. It didn't happen on Trump's watch. Um, there were some protests, but those protests didn't turn out to be riots. <clears throat> but I'm getting a little fed up with things here in America right now. This like... 
And it all is prophecy towards Christian persecution. Because they can't persecute Christians being the mellowest ones in the bunch. Because we are. I hate to tell you. We might tell you that you're wrong for getting an abortion. But we ain't going to slap the abortion out of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just, we're not going to touch you. We're just going to let you know, like, hey, you, you sure you want to do this? You shouldn't do that. Like, like, you know, you don't need to be gay. Jesus can deliver you from that lifestyle. Yes, it's wrong. I understand you're okay with it, but it's wrong. I understand you think you in love, but it's wrong. You know, I mean, we might tell you that, but that doesn't make us haters. That doesn't, you know, come on, man. I just really believe that if Trump doesn't win, I believe some things are so bad that Harris has to win. Um, I didn't mean to say that. Harris has to change some things that have been done by Biden. And she may have been serious when she said this is not a Biden thing. I'm not trying to continue where Biden left off. But um, I understand if you really, 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 really feel that Donald Trump is in the way of something positive. But that positive is not anywhere compared to the negative that you are doing in order to get your establishment across. And the way the Democratic Party has been running us all this time that Biden has been in office is like, you know, you have a child over for your babysitting child. And you never leave this chair right here. You're babysitting a child and you never leave this chair. So what you have to do, you have to make the child sit right here. You don't play with the child. You don't get the child no treats, no no toys to play with. You just want the child to sit here and shut up. Or you give them some coloring book and crayons. And you let them tear up the house and you tweak it on a computer. But the child's tearing up the house and then you just say, come back and sit here. Meanwhile, the child's hungry, but he's not getting fed. And you sitting on here looking at baby pictures, talking about, you know, oh, look at this cute little baby, and looking at little baby videos on TikTok and all that kind of junk. But meanwhile, your baby, sitting right here, is not getting any respect. Not getting no love and attention. He's just tearing up the house. You won't get out of the chair with your lazy butt. To do anything to make the child feel more comfortable and the child starts screaming saying god darn it I'm on the phone you know and well wait a minute if you if, if you feed the child you get the child some milk or something and quit just throwing coloring book and crowns at the child pick pick up your crowns you know I mean come on that's the way we've been ran all this time the Biden's been in office and you're saying, well, you know, I'm on the computer and I'm paying some bills. So shut up. You know, well, I'm on the computer and I'm dealing with this and that and I'm trying to get it on eBay. Get it real cheap. So shut up. You know, and you know, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the way. And you don't understand that this Democratic Party is just basically telling you to shut up and take what is before you. That is the most brutal form and understanding of socialism and communism I've ever seen or heard. That's what they do in other countries. Now I gotta admit in other countries there is that Issue, there is that place where um, people have less opportunity 
um, like that we do here in America, but yet people are always busy. People are always, you know, but they're not busy killing babies. They're not busy. The homosexuals don't feel that they have to interrupt the heterosexuals and they have to hang out with the heterosexuals in order to feel that they're being respected. See what I'm saying? When I went shopping earlier today, um, I went up into the uppity up. Very conservative people. And I assume most of them are going to vote Trump. I didn't go up there because they're Trumpers. I went up there because I needed to go to the big mall up there. There's a big mall up there and I needed to go up there and find a footwear place to get my shoes because I didn't want to get them downtown. Neither did I want to like be catching Ubers all over the place. Well, I went up there and ended up getting an Uber to get home because um, it got dark by the time I got down at the shoe store and, and then walked all the way back across the, um, the, the, the parking lot, about three parking lots actually, to and you know, it was just, did I not turn the got darn Bluetooth off? Why is my ears going out like I'm still on Bluetooth? Bluetooth. Oh my god. Oh, you got me on here now. I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't know that. Whatever. Um let me um let me see here. How am I on Bluetooth? I'm not on Bluetooth. But yet I was able to see that's the problem, like let me turn this off. There we go. Now it sounds better. But, um, the Bluetooth just kicked in, you know, out of nowhere. Um, I just knew they were going to do this. This is the first thing I thought about when Trump was going out here and he's you know, and he's making fun of all the people that are going against him, and he's making fun of Kamala, and there's all these videos on TV where Trump is, like, making campaigns, and other people, other Republicans are making campaigns to, you know, roast Kamala, and all this kind of stuff, and we're all oh, doing the Trump thing, you know, Trump, you know, and um, Trump is saying all these things, and all like that, and people are like, shut up, you know. The man just took a bullet. He need to like calm down. And there's a lot of Christians. They're sitting there saying, you know, one minute they felt like, you know, Jesus was nailed to the cross all over again when Trump, Trump took that bullet. Now he talking. And he talking his way into a hatred, you know, and a hatred campaign. I'm thinking, okay, I don't get the talking. I don't get how you, how that, I really don't get how that has anything to do <sighs> I'll be honest, and somebody was a Christian, I watched this video, um, Alan Parr and Another Christian YouTuber said it. The smart Christian tried to say it, but he's so full of himself. I can't listen to him. I can only listen to half of it. He's so full of himself. He thinks that he's like the smartest man on YouTube when it comes to Christ. He thinks he's the smartest man that ever read a Bible before. You know, he don't even read his own Bible. He don't trust it. He got to go online to trust the Bible. Okay. Everything he talks about it ends up with him being right and everybody else wrong. I can't listen to him. Um, even in that, even when he talks about politics, um, and he's a trumper. 
There's one thing that was said by this one Spanish. He's he he's a legal citizen. He's a legal citizen. He's also a pastor. He was talking about you know what's wrong with Trump and what's wrong with Harris. And I want to say this to, to any Christians that are watching this. Trump's not a Christian. Therefore, I don't have my props with me. I got a little one over here somewhere. I'll tear my house down. I'm trying to get this little Bible. Trump is not, he's not, he, he is not, what's the word, obligated to this Bible. He's not a confessing Christian. So when Christians sit there and they like Trump, but they say, oh, well, Trump, you know, he said this and he said that, and about stop. Stop. Trump is on a secular level fighting for your Christian rights and freedom. He is not obligated to to understand the Ten Commandments, and he's not obligated, okay, to worry about something. You might as well be a Democrat, sitting there saying that he's obligated to worry about something that happened before he ever stepped into the White House. You make me want to cuss. What are you talking about, man? He's not a Christian. The Bible is for Christians. We're the ones that have to follow this. Until somebody is saved, they don't have to worry about this. This is for us. And a lot of Christians, they get all so the movies, then they get mad when they say, oh, well, he did really go and say that. Oh, he did really, 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 really go after Kamala. He really, Kamala went after him too. I'm going to sit back and watch these two secular goofballs go at it. But when it comes to the welfare of this country, I'm all Trump. Okay? You put me in a room with a hundred black people that are voting for Kamala. Whether she wins or loses, I'm not going to show up. You put me in a room with a hundred black people that voted for Trump. If I don't show up, at least I'm a listen. I'm a watch. Why? Because those are a different breed of black people. At least they got their Americanness correct. At least they got their Americanness correct. You know, at least they got their 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 continents correct. You know their 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 politics correct. At least they got their conservatism close to correct. What else? People are vibed into hating on Trump. Just like when I look at YouTube. And I see people at work. The same people that can cheat on their girlfriend. Everybody knows that he's cheating on his girlfriend. Except his girlfriend. And everybody thinks it's cute. How dumb is that? But for some reason, because this is 2024... Nobody thinks that that's nasty and dumb. He doesn't. He has no conviction. He'll sit there and talk about how much his girlfriend does all these wonderful things for him. And it's one thing if you say, well, you need to marry that girl. And he says, oh, I can't do it. Well, let me tell you something. When a woman is a keeper, when a woman 
is loving you the way a wife loves a husband and you don't want to marry her you should feel bad about that you should if I had a, if, let me say it like this whether I'm Christian or secular if I had a woman that I was sleeping with and she loved me like gold or maybe maybe I'm wrong maybe he doesn't believe she loves him because there's some issues there that comes out of her mouth before and after sex just like when I was married you know I was good for the sex but it's the things it was the little things in between that I knew this marriage wasn't going to last so I'm not going to really judge him for that but I'm going to say this if I was in a relationship with a woman where I was having sex with her and I didn't feel committed to her and she's always asking me to stay and always asking me and she's doing things for me like going uh, you know she's celebrating my birthday she's celebrating Father's Day she, she's she's buying me things that you know what I mean and all like that you know now you know I mean there's women out there that I don't know. I, I might be misjudging this particular person. Because he knows her. I don't know her. And they've had their fights. And he he at one time almost did live with her. And then he changed his mind. He decided not to move in. But she's always cooking for him. And always wanting him to stay in. She's got him all involved in her family and all this stuff. To me, it feels like love. But I'm just saying, if I was in that predicament, I would stop having sex with her and say, I'm sorry. But I'm not ready to marry you. And any woman who would do who would do all that for a man, and you ain't getting tired of the fact that he's not proposing to you, he hasn't proposed to you yet, I do believe this woman one day is going to realize that he's not worth it. And she's going to wake up and going to say, okay, I'm done. And that's what happened with a lot of people that have left the Democratic plantation. They said white or black, green or purple, this, this ain't love. There is no conservatism in the Democratic Party. There is no care or concern about our Americanness, our American rights, or our freedoms. We're giving all of our freedoms and our rights to you for you to talk about freedom and rights more than anybody else. But yet, if um, a white man that is, you know, trying to do anything different than status quo over here, then I'm considered a racist. That just pops up out of nowhere. I could be married to a black woman. I could be. I could have black biracial kids. I, it doesn't matter if if I don't do things a certain way. I'm considered racist. If I'm black and I'm trying to be different for my people, I'm trying to do what they screw up all the time. I'm trying to walk that mile that they won't walk. I'm trying to work that job that they won't that they won't work. I'm trying to mediate between them and and white people because they're too afraid to do it. Uh, again. I'm a slave to the white man now. I'm a butt kisser. I'm an idiot. I'm like this woman told me the other day. Yesterday, actually. I'm a, I'm a little Trump boy. A little Trump boy.
I'm getting fed up with America right now. I just watched a series of video titles. One was about they've already got all these mail-in votes and Trump already lost. There's a video about that. There's um, videos about um, and I didn't load it. I got it in my memory, but I didn't re watch them yet. I got them in my watch later. Um, videos about this is all YouTube. Video, but it's on the news too. I was watching it on the news at work yesterday too. It's videos about they done brought in special riot police to keep you from voting. So this is the game we're playing. Okay, so in certain parts of town. Whether you provoke this to happen or whether it's the Democrats actually being not allowed into these places. People are, I, I just knew it. There's no reason. The pandemic is over. There's no reason for us to do mail-in voting. And you know what? They send me mail-in voting cards every other day. I did a video right before Biden won, 2020. I did a video on Facebook where I got all my mail-in votes together. They were sending these to me like almost every day. I got all my votes together. And I did this video on Facebook where I threw them all on the table. Look at, look at this. I had a whole stack like this. Mail in early. They want me to mail in early, like two months early. And what happened? I knew something was fishy. And what happened? Trump lost. But when you looked at CNN and NSNBC and all them, and you watched the election, it was like, oh, red, 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 red. And then all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe it. Oh, my God. I, 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 I'm pinching myself right now. I don't know what happened, ladies and gentlemen, but Biden won. Biden is the, officially the new president of the United States. And we're thinking, what happened to red, 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 red? It looks like Biden's win. If it started off with like 50 to 0. And then it went up to, you know, like 100 to point something, you know, and then it went up and went up and went up and the man never even got to 50 by the time it was time to, but when it was time to, oh my God, he couldn't believe it. He knew they cheated. And it didn't matter whether he was Democratic or Republican, he knew they cheated. And the first thing out of this guy's mouth last night was, how are you going to say they cheated? Okay. How you gonna cheat? Um, if I win a game fair and square, and you give, you ever watch one of them MMA fights where you have a champion? Okay, he's the champion. He's the one that is more popular. The other one is more popular because he's different, but he's a great fighter. And so they, they, he was the best person out of God knows how many Dana White looked over to fight this guy. You know, like, you know, let's say Conor McGregor. Okay, someone fighting Conor McGregor. They made sure that when... Conor McGregor got beat by, um, what's his name, Nate, I think it was Nate Diaz, I think. They made sure that that was like not a, no, Nate wanted to go for the belt. He wanted to go for the belt. Oh, you only won in the exhibition fight. But that was to test you to see if you were capable of beating Conor. You showed that you were capable of beating beating Connor, so now you're gonna to go to the next fight and you're gonna and, and you're gonna beat Connor again. But but 
Connor gets to still be the champion when he clearly lost that fight. And that's the way they're doing this to Trump. Trump won fair and square. But he's not the champion. He's already been deemed not the champion. His brand of politics is already old-fashioned and way too conservative. It's conservatism of the past compared to this new BS that we're coming up with today where people that don't like you don't care if you win or lose because they don't like you. They figure they're clear across the country somewhere. You'll never see them to, 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 to worry about it. And they'll never see you to worry about it. Nobody cares about you. Nobody's coming back to you and asking you, did you vote for me? Why didn't you vote for me? Do you think I won this election fair and square? They don't care. And people just don't understand that Trump, the, it ain't even about Trump. Like, the fact that they're doing this, like Trump always says, it's you that you got to worry about. That's what Trump says at every every rally. He says, it's not about me, it's about you. There's more of you than it is me. I'm just one man. If they're going to do, if they're willing to do this to me, to keep me from making a better America for you, just imagine what they are doing to you. See, there's real politics and then there's just people getting up there trying to get their chance to be in the spotlight. Trump doesn't have anything to, you know, I mean, they tried to do three attempts on this man and whoever is behind all this whoever the real whistleblowers are, whoever the real judges are of these courts, they are letting this game go on and they're letting you play unfairly. We should be just going to, the pandemic's over, we should be going to the polls and voting like normal Americans, like we always did, Get in line, get a voter ID. They also, a bunch of YouTube videos are out there saying that illegals are voting. If illegals are voting, we're going to lose. If that's true. If, if mail-in votes are being counted, They're not going to, they're not going to, why, why, why would you, why, why, what happened to voting at the polls? Like, why are we mailing, why are we voting early? There's no answer. You don't have an answer for that. Why are we voting early? For what? Everybody gets a relative or gets an Uber or whatever, now they're telling us that, oh, if you vote in early, I watched this on the news at work just last night. Night before last. They're saying that if you vote, you know, through the mail, why, and see, this is the thing, why can't we vote online? Why can't we vote online just like we get our driver's license and our registration online? Why can't we vote online? They're not offering that. Because if you vote online, they can control cheating. And there's no way to cover it up. Okay? Why, if you want to mail in the vote early, why are you not doing it online? Why can't we just go online and go to the polls online? And then the computer will let you know you already voted. You don't get to vote again. Because a lot of these 
you know, I've been to the ones, I've been to the old ones, and I've been to the new ones. You're just voting online when you go to the polls. I believe in online voting. Now, that kind of voting, I wouldn't mind doing it early because once you vote, you don't get to vote again. And there's no mail to send you. Every time you go back to that page, you're going to show you exactly what time you voted, what date and time of that day you voted, and what you voted, and show you that your process went through if you vote online. They're not offering you that. They're, they're doing these mail-in votes, and people are saying stuff like he said last time. They found garbage cans of torn, you know. And what they're doing is they're sorting out. What, what they're doing with these God-torn mail-in votes is they're, 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 they're making accidents happen for the votes that they don't support. And votes that they do support. So let me tell you something, folks. I'm closing. If Donald Trump, if they don't end this right now and put a stop to this garbage, I'm going to tell you something. If the Lord ever blessed me to be, you know, where I'd really like to be, I'll keep that between me and him. If the Lord ever blessed me financially where I'd like to be, like let's say I'm Elon Musk and I'm making Teslas. You do this shit right here, and they let you, and they want to act stupid and act like you're not breaking the law. They're going to pick this small little group of people to claim that they broke the law just for the record when there's thousands of people involved. They want to do this? Let's say I'm Elon, Elon Musk. My Teslas will not be will not be bought and sold in America. I will take my Teslas across to another country. I'll take them to the Philippines. I'll take them to uh, somewhere else in China. I'll take them to Europe or, or 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 you know my Teslas will not be sold and bought. You want a Tesla? It's going to come over here on a boat. Whatever country respects me as a conservative I will whatever country respects me and my money and 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 me paying the taxes that are due and all like that and not trying to steal from me and 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 conquer me and bring me down from my high position or whatever whatever country respects me even Russia I will take my Teslas over to Russia. There will be more Teslas being sold to Russians more than anybody else in the world. Because this is wrong. We shouldn't even be mailing in these votes. This is wrong. This is wrong. I swear to God this is wrong. I just knew it. I just knew, and I thought about what could go in, what could go wrong. Oh, there's another way Kamala can win. Cause she already lost. She already lost at the presidential debate. But I'm thinking there's a, there's other ways she could win. There's two ways Kamala could win. She could lie to you and tell you that she's changing um, her policies away from Biden and putting them on you know, the better of America, and she could agree with Trump on some things, you know, just a couple things, maybe the border issue, she could win. If, 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 if Kamala promised to put America back financially and shut down this border crisis, what, they, would, they, would, they would choose her over Trump. Trust me. That's one way to win. The other way for her to win is to cheat like they did with Biden. Oh Trump Trump's an idiot. He he he's always saying somebody's cheating. Well, well wait a minute. How come y'all didn't do this when Bill Clinton and Obama got in office? How come y'all didn't do this when Bush got in office? 
Y'all didn't do no mail-in vote. They wasn't getting on the news talking about all the torn up votes in the trash can, all the Labrador retrievers that, that were used to, you know, uh, you know, old ladies that are dead and gone. They've been dead for 20 years. They're going to put their name in the voters box. They got caught cheating. Okay. How did you separate the ones that were cheating from the good ones? Because I'm sure some Republicans were stupid enough to, 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 to try that crap too. And they were legal voters. Did you did you did you rip those up and throw those in the trash though? And call those illegal without investigating properly? We're gonna lose this election. If they're if we're having trouble now, the election is just a couple days away. We're going to lose. Right, brace yourself, Christians. Brace yourself, everybody is a Trump lover. We're going to lose. We already lost. And they're gonna do it again. Trump is just cry baby and acting like a fool and claiming we're cheating and we're not cheating. When everybody, oh, I want to cuss so bad. Everybody knows he's che they're cheating. And I got people that I work with every day standing right there next to me watching the same news that I watch. How is he saying you're cheating? You're about as dumb as you are black. You older than me. You know good and well, mail-in votes are not part of our culture and history. They didn't start doing this shit till Trump. I'm pissed. And I swear to God, if God just give me that jackpot, I'm out of here. I'll be kissing my kids goodbye. You want to live in this stupid ghetto behind country? Go ahead. I'm out of here. Because it will never ever be. You will never ever matter to this. You do not matter to this country. They got some agenda going on. And this ain't conspiracy talk. If you think this is conspiracy, conspiracy talk. You're just as stupid as you are an abortionist. Okay. They got some agenda going on. Okay, let me take that back. You're just as stupid as you are a baby killer. Let's let's be exact. Okay? They got some agenda going on that they have to meet. They made a promise, they have to fulfill it. Harris is not the only one behind this. Biden wasn't the only one behind this. Obama's not the only one behind this. This has been prophesied by Christians. This has been talked about on TV and everything. Going all the way back to Nixon. And going all the way back to uh, uh, Reagan. Nixon and Reagan. There was this new world order stuff constantly being talked about. One world religion, one world new, new world order. Blah, 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 blah. This has been talked about for years. I remember listening to this crap when I was a kid. And I was just a kid. And they were talking about this. And and, and my mom and different people were like, oh. And the pastor got up in church and preached on it one day about what that means. And my mom was like, I'm having dreams. I'm having nightmares about this. This is just crazy. And we've been talking about it ever since. But the, the children of the people... That talked about it back then. These kids now are reading the wrong Bible translation. Sitting there talking about, oh, you can do this, 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 this. And call yourself a Christian. And, um, you know, um, we believe in the liberal text. And we believe in the liberal people of Christ. You know. And uh, I know that Christian persecution will never be as bad in America as in other places. But I tell you what, Philippines is looking good right now. The uh, the um, Europe is looking good right now. But I do know that as America is becomes a mess. 
America is the powerhouse between all these countries. If when America goes down, everybody's going to go down. They might go down slow, but they're going to go down. And so it almost doesn't matter. Okay? Because a lot of this gay stuff and transgender stuff was going on in other countries before really, 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 before Barack Obama. People were leaving here and going to other countries to get transgender surgery before Barack Obama. Okay? But yet, you go to these countries today, and there's not no gay people going around doing protests. They're, 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 they're not, you know, gay, you don't walk outside, you don't get on the train and and you got the the black brother who thinks everybody owes him something because he's surrounded by all these white people. And then you got the gay dude walking out there acting like he don't have laws. Oh, they're going to put his butt in jail. He walked out there dressed like that. Okay. Um, the transgender people prostituting and doing all this. And then they want to sit there and say that, you know, people in the Bible were transgender. How do you know? You don't know that. If you know that so well, how come you ain't got no control of your own dad on life, okay? Um, you know, people are just out of control. And to me, you can be whatever you want to be. But just like y'all keep Christians in line, y'all move, exem move exemptions, y'all took the Ten Commandments out of the schools, none of that bothers me. Because there were just as many fornicators reading them, reading them Ten Commandments on them walls as there is today. Okay? The only thing is, you know, kids wasn't going around the school back in the day talking about how many blowjobs they was given, but they never had sex with anybody. They were still a virgin. Well, that's true. You still are a virgin. A virgin on your way to hell and you're a virgin hooker. You're a virgin whore. Okay? You know, I mean, it's just getting crazy. Um, it's been crazy. And Kamala is not helping. Kamala's not helping. And um, and don't get me wrong. I mean, Republicans, you know, you saw the 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 thing with the the Trump guys in the Jeep pulling Kamala for Halloween, you know, in handcuffs, you know, um, There's, you know, but they've done extremes before that. There were Hollywood celebrities in that. They made skits, and they made they took a, a, a face of Trump. What's the one that took a Trump face, a Trump head, and set it on fire? I mean, that's it's, you know, come on. I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, you got to look past what is. And focus on what really is. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta fo you gotta focus on what's going. You gotta separate from what's going on to what is right. It doesn't matter if Trump is just as bad as the Democrats or the Democrats are better or or whatever. You know, you gotta focus. You got to think about what is what is right and separate that from what is wrong regardless and you have to humble yourself and be honest and say yeah I might have a right to do this or that but I'm not going to do that yeah 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 I know that I can get Kamala to get me rights to do this and do that but even if she gives me the right to do it I'm not going to do it I know that Trump you know what I'm saying even though he don't he even though he won't admit it, he's with the proud boys. People keep telling me that. He's with the proud boys and he's this and he's that. Okay, well the proud boys have some respect for Christian freedom and rights. Um so that's I'm I guess I'm voting for the proud boys now. Okay, because I don't see you, you know, I don't see Kamala escorting Christians, you know, Kamala escorting Christians out of her out of her rallies. I don't see where, you know, she's any better. And, you know, Trump went to churches and, and you know, and you got racist people that are on the Trump side as well as good, loving, caring 
white people on the Trump side. You got racist people on the Democratic side. And you got people who ain't racist, they just want you to vote Democrat. And you got people on the Democratic side who don't care. They only care about themselves. And even if Kamala wins, they want to know what's in it for them. Because they don't care about you. They don't care about your damn selves. And who would be so... What kind of control are you trying to have over America when you take a shot at a president that is fighting for your right of seniority, your right of respect in your own land? You know good and well the Democrats ain't going ain't to fight for you like Trump. But you took a shot at him. And the thing about people who, white people who would pick up a gun and shoot at somebody, it usually has nothing to do with being Democratic or Republican. Just one thing that they want. I think the person, the people, if you look at the history of the people that took a shot at Trump, they want Trump to be something that he not only is not allowed to be, but even if he was allowed to be, I don't think he's that way. Because before he ever became president, he was giving all these black people money, and all these black people still owe him a debt that they'll never pay. He gave Jesse Jackson and Sharpton and different people, you know, in you know, in the NBA, the NFL and you know, he gave people loans. In the rap music scene and all like that, he gave people loans. And they haven't paid them back. He invested in Hillary and Bill when they were in office. And something happened in there that they pissed them off. And so when, so when, you know, Hillary was trying to replace Obama, she wanted to be the next president after Obama. Okay, Trump exposed her and they would have, you know, and black people, because black people are just dumb, black people, sorry, uh, I'm on my channel and I'm on this channel, so I'm going to say that. Black people tend to be dumb. Okay, so they were going to vote for Hillary. But now that they, you know, and, and I got to admit, who cares if, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with the Democrats on this. Who cares if Kamala, why is anybody worried about whether Kamala's defining herself as black or Indian? Well, you know, I don't see no Indians around her. Well, I don't see no Indians hanging around, you know, Rama's Wami either. So, you know, that's just as bad. Like, if if I'm running for president, Trump's family is right there. Trump's family is right there. And Biden's family was well, son Hunter. Not the rest of his family. I think he has more sons than Hunter. And I think he has a daughter or something, too. But... Biden only allows Hunter to be in the spotlight. Okay? Kamala don't let nobody in her family be in the spotlight. Trump got his whole family and his grandchildren in the spotlight. He got his grandchildren getting up there leading rallies already. I don't know why he does it. He's trying to show you the image. And that's the proper image. The image is the nuclear family. It is not a bunch of flamboyantly dressed dummies, okay, going out here, not caring about anything but themselves, but they want to tell you how to vote. Go ahead on and cheat and act like you don't know they cheated. Go ahead. But if Trump will don't, if, if, if Kamala wins, this is going to turn me against a lot of black Christians 
as well as black people in general. This is going to turn me, you know, like I, I don't hate nobody. I don't hate nobody. Okay. But this is going to turn me so much against the Democratic Party. Um, that I'm probably going to feel like I'm probably going to think about leaving the country. I mean, seriously, I don't think I can do it. But I'm really, really, really giving it a lot of thought. I really am. Because I've had it with black people being stupid about this. Okay? You can't read between the lines. Well, look at look at look at the crime rate and, and, and tell me why I should even expect black people to read between the lines. Look at all these conservative blacks defending these ghetto ass blacks. And when they go into riots and they go to killing innocent people and hurting innocent people, okay, they want to do all these boys who are standing up and these boys are... Uh. Right, he, he stood up all right. He stood up, never got that college degree. He's out there running around. You know, you didn't... You didn't what, you thought he was going to go to college after that? Even if he got away with it, he wasn't going to college after that. He ain't going to better himself after that. He's going to be a thug for the rest of his life. It's not going to help him to go out there and put on a t-shirt and march and, and end up in a fight. And on the back of that t-shirt, Black Lives Matter, it says it's all about us. That's where I get off. That's where I get off. It's the back of that t-shirt. I got no problems with Black Lives Matter, even though it shouldn't say Black Lives Matter, it should say All Lives Matter, like Trump said, or it should Americans, it should say Americans Matter, or something like that. But Black Lives Matter. What about the rest of us? And I'm speaking for white people and all the people. You know, there's more minorities than black people. How? how why? What about the rest of us? And then it says on the back of that t-shirt, it's all about us. And I showed people that and they did the same thing they do to Trump. Well, yeah, it is all about us. Dude, you idiot. Think about what you're saying. For, oh, I want to cuss. For two seconds, think about what you're saying. And if she wins, for the second time they cheated. That's the only way for her to win if they cheat. And it's all right. And, and this is what gets me so pissed off. They play with us like we're toys. These, these same people that sit there and say that Trump is all this and all that. And he's they're making up stories about Trump that ain't never happening in no rallies. He's never saying this in no Hannity interviews. Or no Tucker interviews. Where they getting this shit from? These same people. These same people are going to get up there and talk about everybody cheating on the election and the cops coming and, 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 and the military coming in and they're blocking people from going into the voting places and all that. And as soon as it's all over, they're going to say, well, Trump's in the news uh, today. He's such an idiot. He's sitting there saying they cheated. Help me, Jesus. You said they cheated. But now, because Trump says they cheated, he's Lulu. Oh, God. Oh, oh. Just like before. They said, before Trump ever said they cheated, you said they cheated. And it was all over the news. You showed the, you showed the mail-in votes in the garbage can. Did you put them in the garbage can? Did you just get us all stirred up? You showed the torn up votes. You showed, you showed voters with Labrador retrievers' names on them. 
and all these things. And then what happened? I come to work the next day. Trump's saying they cheated. but He said that after you said they cheated. Just like the dogs and the cats and with the Haitians and all that. Like, the news said it first. The news said it first. And now they're making all these tracks about it. These little YouTube TikTok songs about it. You're eating the dogs, eating the cats, and they got the little dance and all that. And they're making it about sex, sexual, you know, fornication and all that kind of stuff. You know, this country is nasty and dirty and filthy. And I cannot clean it up because I'm not the whistleblower. And I'm not in any court. You got Ted Cruz, my man. Oh my God. Oh my God. You got Ted Cruz investigating all these people. And some are getting fired. But most of them are not. They're, he's, they're going to sit there and they're going to refuse to answer quite well. I don't understand what you mean. Well, you knew, well, you knew what the F you was talking about when you was calling Trump all kinds of names and liars and all kinds of stuff. Now you're going to sit there and say, I'm not sure I understand the question, Mr. Mr. Cruz. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't understand what you mean. Let me repeat the question. I'm not sure what... what, what the train to lie and black people I only got one word it's a, t a two letter word for you cause y'all not white people not white people maybe the, the, the small number of white people that are sitting there playing games with all this and and you know, but y'all didn't come from, first of all, the Democratic Party. Y'all was always the Republican Party. And y'all switched over. You know that. You know that's true. And y'all was never non-conservative. There was never no liberal blacks. And now, out of all the people sitting out there, you know, like, when I watch the news every day, I see white people getting on there saying, oh, you know, these little rich white people saying whatever, 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 because they got to show... They got a show and they got fans and they're making a lot of money to lie. But all these people out here on the street claiming that they um, ain't, ain't never able to get on top. Ain't never able to get a step up. You sitting there settling for these lies and you, you love to come around me and talk that trash about, you know, how much Trump is an idiot. But yet, you know. If you thought I was a Democrat, you would complain about Kamala. Even though you're going to vote for her. But if you thought that everybody in the room was a Democrat, you would sit there and hate on Kamala. But because one of us happens to be a Republican, he ain't necessarily got to be a Trump supporter. He can just be a Republican. You're going to sit there and pick on him about Trump. And I just say F you. Really. I'm the heck with y'all. I'm, I'm done with y'all. You know, I don't even want to talk about it no more. After that woman, you know, all of a sudden I'm little Trump boy. Because she found out that, oh, my black butt got the nerve, the audacity to be a Trump supporter. You know, like, I don't have, you know, white people don't want me in their little white ghettos. And that's one thing. I don't want to be there anyway. Okay, I'm already, I'm already, I've already left the ghetto when I was a kid. I don't want to go from a black ghetto to a white ghetto. Thank you very much. I'll pass. But black people, I don't understand your love and your hate, and it's always about he shits, she said. I got a woman holding a grudge at me right now because I got upset with her about her conversation, and she said she didn't. And I said okay, and I walked out the room. But because I had the audacity to say anything about law and order with her, because I had the audacity to talk about politics, I'm accused of 
raising my voice, which I wasn't raising my voice, I'm accused of disrespecting a woman. And then, you know, my boss comes to me and he's like, well, she, what, what did she say? What she, oh, he don't want to tell me. Okay. I know what she said. Because she's black. I know what she said. I know how black people talk. Okay. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of Pittsburgh. I'm sick and tired of the sanctuary cities. I'm sick and tired of people like Kamala. Whether she be black or Indian, she might as well be black. She don't act no better than she don't act no better than the blacks that, that's voting for her. She might as well. She is black. I thought Kamala was 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 you know Indian, and we're worrying about it. No, no, Kamala left her Indian family and went after her, you know, one percent, you know, black heritage. She might come from an Indian family, but she ain't trying to hang out with them. She want to be a ghetto broad. She loves the ghetto. She should ride the subways more often. She should ride the subways more often. She should drink a lot of Hennessy and a lot of orange soda, eat a lot of fried chicken. Okay? And, you know, she should weave her hair and get extensions and all like that. Move to Compton and see what it really feels like. Then maybe she'll want to go back to India and be a real Indian. But I got to admit, that's a nigger. That is not, that is not no Indian woman. <laughs> I'm sorry. She is just about as much a sister from the ghetto. More than any sister of the ghetto I've ever seen. I'm sorry. And I'm just sick of all y'all. I'm just sick. Tired, man. Like, you know, I'm tired of everybody. <sighs> Trump doesn't win. I'm really considering. I mean, I'm not. I'm not joking. I'm really considering if I want to really, really, really stick up for this country anymore. If Trump doesn't win, I'm wondering where I care anymore. Talk about me caring about Christians. Yeah, the Christians that really care. I'll care about them. But you know, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to get out there and take a brick to the face or get hit in the head with a beer bottle or whatever in the name of Jesus and call it Christian. How many people got saved from me getting hit, hit in the head with a beer bottle? How many people got saved from me getting beat up in the middle of the street? I mean, if, 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 if 10 people get saved from that, and I need evidence that they're saved, 10 people get saved because some drunk dude or some dude filled with demons or whatever beat the crap out of me. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take the L. But other than that, these Christians that are living in this country, God bless you. I will move to another country and send you, send you as many tithes and offerings as I can send you. But I'm getting tired of this country right now. What they're doing to us with these parties is ridiculous. And it is highway criminal, highway robbery. It is. It's wrong. And I knew the minute I saw the first mail-in vote came to my doorstep, I'm thinking, God darn it, here we go again. And Trump tried to cancel this. He fought this him and Tim. He, him and that's how Tim and him and Ted Cruz got rid of their hatred for each other. Okay, their little their little you know slam that they had against each other. They got together and they they tried to put an end to this, and they thought that they did. But how did you put an end to it when you lost? You lost, and you lost unfairly, but you still lost. Okay, and look what happened. As a result of him losing. 
And God ain't stupid. God is not going to bless America when we lie. I don't care how pretty. I don't care how lovely Indian, Arab, black, white you look. What you identify as. I don't care what your pronouns are. If you don't understand how to treat America. You know, I watched the parents today. And I was in Target. Different atmosphere. When you go up uptown Target. And I watch a lot of YouTube videos. And you see a lot of the people that are on YouTube and making money on YouTube from their little shorts and their little TikTok connecting that with YouTube and all that kind of stuff. These people are already middle class or high class. They're already making good money. And some of these girls, these kids are real young. And, you know, they, they do things that are very sexual and sensual on YouTube and TikTok. And then they go turn around the next day and do a video with mom and dad or grandpa or whatever. And I'm thinking, if my daughter was doing those Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce songs, you know, putting her hands between her legs and shaking her little booty and her super, super skimpy mini skirt and all like that, I would never do a video with my daughter. But kids have these rights today. There was a kid in Target earlier tonight. And she was, you know, she had on a little skimpy little thing. She must have been like 13 years old or younger. And she had on like her little skimpy little skirt and that and that. And she was walking through Target with her parents. And she was doing this little dance, you know, while she was walking. And her older sister was looking at her like, stop. Like her older sister was looking at her like, stop, stop. And her mom looked over her and said, start asking her these like questions about how she learned to dance and all like that and everybody started laughing and I'm thinking now let's go back to the older sister the older sister was the more maturest one out of all of y'all because you let her wear what she wants to wear to the store and then you let her do whatever kind of TikTok and YouTube she wants to do. And she's going to brag to you about it. I had a conversation with a girl just yesterday about Halloween. After I saw the 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 um, depiction of Donald Trump Halloween dragging Kamala in handcuffs and this girl says she's an atheist but she too doesn't believe in celebrating Halloween she believes in getting candy for a kid and letting her kids celebrate Halloween but you know me, my kids never forgave me for not letting them celebrate Halloween and I did let them celebrate Halloween I just lectured everybody and went on live Facebook. And they got me. I don't think my youngest daughter ever forgave me for that. But I don't care. Um, I took them to a Christian Halloween party. That they wanted the secular people to come in there to their Halloween party. And hopefully they would start going to their church. Because they loved the Halloween party so much. But the Halloween party was so rated R. You'd be better watching, Elm, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street or Jason or one of them. You, you know, you'd be watch, you better, you'd be better off watching some girl get raped and sold, sold in pieces. I mean, in in on in the middle of the street. This was so graphic and so crazy. And then they had these little little cute little girls, little baby girls. They had to be like five or or younger. Okay, at the end of the hall, after all that blood and, and all that chopping up and wearing masks and scaring the heck out of you and wearing all kinds of creepy stuff, like, where do these Christian people, how, like, Christian people get these ideas from? So, anyway, they watch a lot of movies, okay, for sure. Movies they shouldn't be watching. 
Okay, but they had a cute little girl who were giving you tracks at the end of the, uh, when they got to the end of the door. And I just went ballistic. I didn't really get mad until we got to, to two little girls or two little angels, which there ain't no fem such thing as a female angel. And you need to stop doing that because people literally think you got that out of the Bible. That is not in the Bible. There are no she's in the Bible when it comes to dignitaries. Sorry. That's another reason for the atheists to hate the Bible. But not only there are there no gays, okay, in, in, in trans people, okay, as dignitaries in the Bible. There are no women as dignitaries, no females in the Bible as dignitaries. Females are the names of cities, and females are the names of animals and things of that nature, but they're not the names of dignitaries. God is he, Jesus is he, the Holy Spirit is a he, the devil himself is a he. We're all dogs, ladies. There are no cats in as dignitaries in the Bible. Sorry. But they had cute little girls there giving out tracts. We understand your point. But these people that are walking up the hall behind me, they think that this is actually in the Bible. That's the problem. And it's not the Bible. This is all play acting. There's no little cute little angels in the Bible. Wearing a little blonde hair all, down, all the way down in a little flower dress. Trying to be the softness of Halloween. The most softest part of the Halloween party. No, that doesn't happen. But anyway. Um, in closing. I think I know why God is calling me to leave Pittsburgh. And I believe that something just happened on my phone that I didn't expect to happen. And it's funny how it went through. And I've been talking about this for a long time and people at my job and other places think that, you know, think, uh, Cruz, you ain't going nowhere, you ain't bubble, okay. 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 Okay then. Okay then. Alrighty then. Okay. Watch this. Anyway, I just did something with my phone. Got one thing done after another. And then I'm strolling through YouTube and voila! They've already decided that Trump lost. He's already lost by mail-in voting. We'll see what happens after he claims they're cheating, which they're not going to let him claim they're cheating. Whoever the whistleblower is and whoever the courts are behind all this, they are going to let him fall on deaf ears again. They're going to let him fall on idiot ears again. No one's going to listen to him. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to, he's going to, he already said, if he doesn't win, he's done. He's not going to fight anymore. He's not going to fight anymore. And I guarantee, and if I was you, Trump, I would take your towers. I would take all your employees. I would take everything that you invested in America and take it across seas. You already have enough relations with people outside the country doing everything for you. They think you're Russia, Russia anyway. I'd say go get with Putin. Okay? I'd say go get with Putin because the peace that they want here in America is not peace. It's us bending over and opening our legs and letting, letting, letting foreign relations rape us is what that is. That's all that is. We're all gay if Trump doesn't win because all we're going to do is bend over and open our legs and take the L. That's all we're going to do. We're going to just move out of the way and let other people come into this country and take over. We're already doing it right now as we speak. We've been doing it since Barack Obama and before. What do you think is going to happen now?
And I'm sure Kamala is going to do some things different than Biden. But these migrants that are here are voting. That's another thing I just heard. They don't, they're not even legal citizens. They, they don't even have ID or anything, and they're voting. And Trump is going to lose it, and he's going to be mocked and laughed at by it. And, it's going, and I say, don't have a heart attack, man. You're the richest man. You and Elon Musk are the two richest people in America right now. I say you and Elon Musk get together and go into another country and build an empire. And invite many Americans. Hey, if you don't like the Kamala Biden administration, come over here. Get on a plane and come over here to this country. And I'll show you a better civilization. That's what I would do if I was Trump. I would get a, I would get with somebody like Elon Musk and I'd say, hey, let's go over and rebuild the Philippines. And take our Teslas over to the Philippines. You want, you want a Tesla? It's getting shipped from the Philippines. Your American behind will pay us money in the Philippines for a Tesla. You're not only going to pay for the Tesla, you're going to pay for it to get dragged across the river. How about them apples? Okay? You want, you want this and that from China and all like that? Guess what? China's the only one that's going to do it for you because without somebody like Trump around, ain't nobody here to do it for you. So you, yeah, you want to wipe your butt? Call China, okay? Um, since since you're dumb enough to let them to let toilet paper come from China in the first place, um, I'm just sick and tired, man. Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. And I would. If I was Trump, if I was Elon Musk, I would go to another country. At least I'd take my business over there. I would keep my American status here as an American. But I would take my business to another country because you cannot come after my business because that's what they're going to do. You can't come after the rich when I'm not rich off of American soil. I'm, my riches come from another country. I'm just sharing a little bit with you, but if you don't like it, I can take it all back over there. See what I'm saying? And so, you know, I used to think, I used to be afraid to live anywhere else. I wanted to visit, but I was, but living there, nah, nah, nah. But then, I've been looking at all these videos, I mean recent videos, over the last few months of the Philippines, you know, um, the Neverlands, you know, different places in the UK, different places in Europe. You know, and I got friends that are telling me when they retire, they're moving to, they're moving to Sweden, and they're moving to Mexico, and they're, you know, all the Mexicans leaving Mexico and coming over here. Well, maybe we can be safe in Mexico since all the bad Mexicans are being shipped over here to the U.S. Maybe, maybe, and I've always said, like, Americans should take over Mexico. We should make Mex, we should colonize Mexico. Because we're going to be in bed with Mexico until the world ends. We've been stuck with Mexico and their crap for I don't know how long now. Just colonize the place. Go in there and, and, and take over. Colonize the place. Colonize them like they colonized the Philippines years ago. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you, you took Puerto Rico. Take Mexico. Make Mexico part of the United States. And then there won't be no border for them to cross. Okay? There will not be no border for them to cross. Okay? There'll just be a road there to where normal Mexican Americans get to ride down the street freely every day and they have to follow the same rules and guidelines and policies that the rest of America has to follow. No free lunch, no free Walmart, no free bathroom rights, okay? You just do everything that we do because we, you an American just like I am, you know. You don't get to sneak across the border. 
You get to drive across. You get to drive down the road. Don't sneak across the border. That's what needs to happen. And I think if the Lord tarry you long enough, which I don't think he will at this point, but if the Lord tarry you long enough, oh yeah, we will take over Mexico. I see it in the future. I see it, you know, I see it, and not only Mexico, but, you know, a lot of other nations. I believe in, in the near future, I believe we're going to take over a certain part of the Middle East. A certain part of, a certain part of the Middle East will be American. You know, I believe, you know, you, you, you know, people, people that depend on Americans and desert their country and let their country suffer and come over here because they feel that their country is not treating them right or they figure the heck with the country, they can do better somewhere else. Meanwhile, their country is suffering. Okay. Like I know a girl who got wealthy off of YouTube in the Philippines. She is now taking her wealthy money and investing it into um, pet ownership and the health of animals. Because, you know, poverty, and she also invests a lot of her money in poverty in the Philippines, too. And, and, and see, her president is not going to overtax her. Okay, or you know, who who have whatever whatever the leaders are of their country, they're not going to overtax her. They're not going to, you know. I mean, you know, what I'm saying if you reach out to the poor in her country, people are going to, people in power are going to support you and 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 help you. Okay. And other people in the country, whether they be conservative or whether they be gay or whatever they're going to be, they're going to help you. And in her country, people know their place. People know their place. You know, in her country, homosexuals can be accused of sexual harassment just like men can. It doesn't matter if they wear a dress. You put your hands on somebody's kid or go in the wrong bathroom or something and somebody don't like it, you can be accused of sexual harassment. Just like a grown behind man can. There are no special rights or privileges for gay people, gay, gay transgender people in her country. And they're all over the place. You know what I'm saying? But they don't have their own communities and all that kind of stuff. Like they do in some places, you know. Like they do in Canada, you know. They have their own communities. They have their own neighborhoods. You know, the last time we saw something like that is Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> the Bible... The Bible is, it's all coming alive. Every prophecy is about to be fulfilled. And I really believe that a lot of this is a loss because God is not, God is not going to wait any longer. People have predicted some very bad things coming in the year 2025 people have predicted some bad things coming what they did know is that well you're going to lose your Trump you're not going to get Trump if those bad things are going to happen in order for those bad things to happen the Democrats will definitely win they didn't think about Trump losing it Trump's not going to let a certain amount of bad things happen there's some things he has no power over but the things that he does, he's going to do his best. You know, but, you know, one thing true about Trump, and I'm not, I, Trump's not a Christian. Trump's not a Christian. But Trump would not be, if you read your Bible, Trump is not the only person who stood up for Christians and got persecuted for it. 
Just people in the Bible. Who got the same persecution the Christians got for standing up for the Christians, for standing up for the Jews, for standing up for the Christians. They got the same persecution. They were persecuted with the Christians. And they're persecuting Christians in other countries. But I would love to go outside my door and know that if I worked hard to get where I'm at, that I'm not going to lose my business or lose my house, my property and have to give it over to somebody else because we have a new election. Somebody else is in office this year. Well, I bought this property. I paid off this property. I work hard to have the funds to buy this business and all these things. And because of some decisions, you can say, oh, well, we need you to put these people on your property. We need you to, if you don't hire certain people regardless of their inabilities, or if you don't hire certain people regardless of their dress code and their, and their you know, their sexual behavior and all this kind of stuff, their laziness and whatever have you, if you don't hire these kind of people, you're going to go to court. You're going to be, you're going to go to court, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose your business. Because we want you to, to move these people into your real estate. We want you to put these people into your business. You know. We've been complaining about that at work. When Americans go to other countries, the first thing they care about is them being able to communicate with the people that are the natives that live there. When people come over to our country, the first thing they think about is what we can do for them without us getting too closely connected. And they think it's beneath them and unfair for them to know enough English to get through a god darn day at work. Then they get offended about stuff you say. How are you going to get offended by stuff I say when you don't even know a word of English? But when we go over their country, look at any video on YouTube about people going to, you know, the Philippines, going to other parts of China. They speak, Americans speak to these people in their language. They know enough language to say hello. They know enough language to call you by name. They know enough language to tell you what they want to eat. They know enough language to tell you how to call the police. They have their survival package at least. And who do they want to hang out with? They don't want to hang out with all black folks or all white folks. They want to hang out with Asian people. They want to hang out with European people. They want to hang out with African people or Jamaican people. But over here, oh, you know, you got all these races and oh, these these Spanish Orient people. And it can't just be Spanish Spanish people. It got to be whatever Spanish colony they're from. So they only hang out with over here with these people. They don't hang out with Mexicans. They don't hang out with Puerto Ricans. You know, they just hang out with their with their own. And then you got these people over here from this country in Europe. They only hang out with their own. And you got people from Africa only hanging out with Africans. And then you got people, you, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. And none of them can speak English. But, I, oh yeah, but they know enough English to vote. They know enough English to vote. They know how to go in there and hit that lever and vote Democrat. They know how to go in there and they know how to, you know, there'll be people there saying, just point. They, they, don't, have to, they don't have to check your ID or nothing. They just got to point. Right, yeah, yes, ma'am, right there. Yes, ma'am. See it? See it? Yeah, that, yeah come on. Right there, right there. No English.
But I'm done before I get myself in trouble. This is the worst social media video I've ever done. Hopefully, won't nobody from my job see this video. Hopefully, won't nobody that goes to my church see this video. I'm pissed. I knew. I knew these mail-in votes were a fraud. I knew that they were breaking the law by doing this, and nobody cares. Where do they get the right to even do this? Who says they can or cannot do these things? Why would you want to do this when... Okay. What? You know what my biggest problem is? This is my biggest problem, and this is where I close. This is my biggest problem out of all this. Whoever is behind... You know, in the in the Supreme Court, in the Collectoral College, these places and these people that accept people to run for presidential office. You effing knew that Trump was disqualified before he chose to run. And whether you're gay or trans... Or whether you just you just demonic and you skull and bones or whatever the f you are, you knew you was going to sit back and let every 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 nasty attack go against Donald Trump. Why didn't you just disqualify the man? Why are you letting him go through all this? Why didn't you just disqualify him? And say, Donald Trump, you're not fit to run for office. Why are you getting us all excited thinking that we're going to make some changes in America that will help us all? Why do you think we're going to... Donald Trump, you're not qualified to run for office. You were going up against him before he went in office the first time. I think the people that are doing the whistleblowing and making the decisions behind the president are just as dumb as some of the voters that don't even know that don't even speak English. I really do. They don't they they're the ones that need to be impeached. They're the ones that need to be you know, they're the ones that need to leave and go to another country. They need to, they need to be out of the White House. They need to be out of the Collectoral College, out of the Supreme Court. They have no clue what they're doing. Oh, okay, well, we have to let Trump run, but we're going to let you put him in prison if you can come up with some. We're going to waste airtime and all of this for them to make his wife embarrassed for something that she knows he's not doing right now. You got to bring up his past with freaking Stormy Daniels when his wife already knows about his situation with Stormy Daniels. She don't want to hear about it again. She's already embarrassed about that. You're not only taking shots at Donald Trump, you're taking shots at his whole goddamn family. Going in her closets and messing with her lingerie and all that crap because you want you want to try to prove that Trump is hiding documents. I'd have shot you. I'd have never made it to be president because I'd have shot one of y'all. The minute somebody goes against my wife's clothing drawer, pow! I would have said, forget the presidency. I want them two men that was that was in there smelling my wife's lingerie. And and, and, and and messing with her panties and stuff. Okay? I want them to fire. If they're not fired, I will spend every dollar that I make from the Trump Towers putting their asses in, in prison. Now I'm not giving it up until they until they until they're in prison for that. It's a shame what they do to us. It's crazy. But you gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. This is the last thing I want to say. How do we know? 
How do we know? That there isn't. How do we know that? How do we know who's real in all this? I mean, how do we know that the presidency isn't just AI now? Like, like, how do we know that we're all not all being fooled? How do we know that Donald Trump, if he's real at all, he's just coming out of his hiding place, saying some things here and there, going through some interviews and all like that. But how do we know the media is even real? How do we know, like, like, have you ever went to the MSNBC news station and walked in and, and saw them doing the news? Have you ever been to MSNBC? Have you, have, have you ever... Have you ever been to CNN? Have you ever been to Fox? Have you ever been to The View? Are they serious? I mean, does The View is The View a real show? I mean, what kind of retirement has Whoopi Goldberg got? Like, she's got to be the ugliest, demonic-looking thing on The View. Always hating on everybody but herself. And so many people will make all this money and become so, you know, like Whoopi Goldberg. I remember when I first saw Whoopi Goldberg in a movie for the first time. I'm thinking, this ugly black woman right there. Then I saw her in Sister Act, and I said, oh, that's my favorite. That's my baby. That's my baby. I saw her in Sister Act. I said, oh, yeah, baby. I started having wet dreams about Whoopi in, in Sister of Act. In Sister of Act. Uh, Sister Act, okay. Um, and then I seen her in Jumping Jack Flash, and I'm thinking, oh. Then I seen her in some other movies. Even movies that were about slavery and all like that. I'm like, that's a good looking black slave right there. You know. But her average outlook every day is like, oh my God. Is that the way you leave the house every day, Whoopi? I know you're prettier than that. Is that the way you leave the house? And then that Bahar lady. If Donald Trump is nasty for what he's saying, he should apologize for teaching um, Bahar how to talk. She's worth, oh my God, you talk about somebody roasting everybody. I watched this video the other day, men are useless, we don't need men. And the Filipino P made a big, she made a show out of it. She's going to be rich. I know wonder she got money to feed the puppies. She's going she's to be rich. But I'm out of here. I'm pissed. And I know they're going, they can't wait to tease me at work and say stuff to me at work and if Trump loses, man, you know what I mean? Um, you know, all the stuff that I've said on this channel about black folks, you ain't got to worry about me saying it no more. If Trump loses, I'm not going to say anything on this channel because I have nothing nice to say to any of y'all. I have no apology for what I say. I'll probably say the stuff that I said on this channel. You say something to me after Trump loses, I'm going to say it to your face. I'll probably end up in the hospital just flat out dead. I'm sick and tired of everything from, from you know, black people acting dumb about this when y'all grew up better than this, or at least tried to. All the way to the got darn black church. I'm sick of y'all. I really am. I'm sick of y'all. And a lot of this, just like Barack Obama, what's putting her in office, even though 
she's going to win either way because they're going to cheat. But what's really putting her in office, even if they did, even if she does win fair and square, what's putting her in office is the black vote. Just like Barack Obama. But when Barack Obama wasn't in the White House, who was he hanging out with? He ain't hanging out with your little simple black behind. Neither was Michelle, neither was neither was Hillary, neither was Biden. Biden telling you you ain't you ain't you black unless you vote for him. He wasn't hanging out with your black butt. Donald Trump went to the black church. Donald Trump went down to the black music industry. Okay? Donald Trump, you know, yeah, Biden went to church and stood there and looked at like he's ready ready to pee on himself. You know. Uh, Barack Obama went to church and decided to preach a message. Uh, Barack, what message you preaching? You don't know if you Christian or Muslim. What 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 message you what what message is that? Well, obviously, I didn't hear any any Jesus or anything like that in the message because you just run in your mouth, but you ain't really got a religion. And then what did Kamala do? Oh, we're gonna dance. We're gonna shake it. We're going to invite the LGBTQ community to come over here and help us shake it. I'm really fed up with this country, man. I'm like, I, you know, I, and, and, and there's people behind all this that all they got to do is say, okay, okay, no, 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 we can't go that far. Okay, enough is enough. No, 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 no. There's no mail-in votes. That's all they had to say. Everybody's going to go to the polls. And if y'all want to take an extra day to make sure everybody gets to the polls, that's fine. But everybody's going to the polls like normal adults. And they're going to have their voter ID ready, just like normal adults. But no, they're not doing that. And then we're not going to say that's not cheating? This is a mess. And I got a feeling that Donald Trump is going to lose. And Donald Trump already promised. If he loses, he's done. He's not going to say anything. He's done with social media. He's done with... He's done with this BS. He's done. You ain't got to worry about him no more. And people will still be bitching and moaning about Donald Trump. And he ain't even around. Now I'm doing all this talking like the man is going to lose. If Donald Trump wins this election, he is more powerful than just the guy that got in the way of Roe versus Wade with the abortion thing when he was supposed to be in Mari Lago mind his own business. Okay? He's more powerful now. If he's able. To stop them from cheating this time and make sure he wins fair and square. I'm going. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be thrown away. But I really think that whoever the whistleblowers are, and whoever the lobbyists are behind all this, they are just sitting back laughing and masturbating and chewing snuff. And having a blast watching this stuff. Helping them create false media stuff and that. And they're just having a blast. They think it's funny. They're putting Trump through all this when all they had to do was say, Trump, you you can you are not qualified to be the president of the United States. That's my ruling. If you can prove to me that you're qualified, that you have the qualifications to be president. Fine, but nobody wants you. You don't have the qualifications. I'm sorry. I can't help you. But no. They want to sit back and say, yeah, he, he, uh, go ahead and run. Let him run. Let him run. Let's see what we got. Okay. First lie, point. Next lie, point. Put him in jail, point. Claim he's lying. Point. 
Everything is a point. When when does he when does he when does he get a win? When does he get to when does he get to say, Oh, I, I hit that ball. I hit that ball correctly. It went out into the field. That's not a ball. That's that that went in the air. Don't I get to run the first base at least? Like, come on. It's supposed to be a touchdown. You still calling it a first down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How are we going to have first down and two in the, in the same runs? I'm running again, and I and, and, and I get up there, and I, it's still a first down. That's not how you play football. And it's just a shame what they're doing. And, and, and you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Unless the next president to vote Republican gets in office and says I'm going up against mail order voting I'm going up against I'm putting I'm putting the people that did what they did to Donald Trump in jail unless he goes deaf corn on the Democrats I'm telling you I probably won't vote Republican you think Trump had to be you know my match in order to get some things done and in order to stick up for this country the next person the next person that gets in office is going to have to be I don't know he going to have to be you know Captain Kirk he going to have to just come down here with the with the enterprise people and just you know Put everything back in check before he even before he even even decides to run. Start putting people in prison. Start proving their crap and put them in jail for what they've done for what they got away with. Then the people will ask you, "You sure you don't want to run for president, bro? We could really use you. We need a good Republican. We ain't had a a good Republican since Donald Trump." That's how it's done. You need to go in there undercover and take down your enemies first before anybody likes you, before anybody, whatever. And then when people see that life seems to be better with these people out of the picture, then they'll automatically put pressure on you to run for president. Okay? And Donald Trump will come out of hiding if he's still alive at that time. And he will help you. He will endorse you and help you run for president. He will support you. But I got to get out of here. We've been done two hours. And, um, but I just, looking at these video slides, of they're getting ready to talk about what we least feared. You know, it happened. We got illegals voting. And you know that's not right. Who, how come nobody's pulling the, the plug on this? Like, who pulls the plug on these things? You got illegals voting. You got the mail-in votes. They're counting the mail-in votes and calling it a win before I get a chance to go to the polls. My vote's not going to count. Meanwhile, they're going to bitch your bone and say all kinds of stuff in all these fake news programs about all the votes that came in illegal. But I went and voted legally. And we don't win. I can't tell you how much I wish I could just pack my bags right now. Okay. And leave for the next couple days. And then come back here on November 5th. And and vote and then leave again. I don't even want to be here when I find out the results. I want to be in another country listening to the, the results of the election. And if Trump don't win, well, I'm not in the country. I don't have to worry about people teasing me. I don't have to worry about people... Mocking me and coming at me like I ain't like like I don't like I shouldn't feel like getting up out of my chair and punching somebody in the face, okay? If my little butt can reach their face, okay? Um, but you know I'm just sick and tired of the way things are. This is wrong. 
This is wrong. This is wrong. And they really thought that Kamala, when Biden disappeared, that she was going to ask, she was going to request or get somebody to run for the presidency. And it looked like at first she didn't want, she didn't even want it. But then she got on her high horse and said, oh, this was my campaign. It ain't Biden, so. We'll see what happens. God is good. Either way, God is good. He's going to surprise us, just like he surprised me tonight. He's going to surprise America, too. So, God bless you, dear Christian Life Applications Officer, Area of One. Um, watch till the end. I will see you soon with more, probably tomorrow or the next day. In Jesus' name, God bless.